Hey everyone, today we're talking about a little bit of a tangent from the Unconventional Redstone series, and we'll be talking about redstone clocks. The thing is, is that there's a few very general redstone clocks that people can just take up and apply to just about everything. But everybody already talks about them, so we're going to be looking at all the clocks today that are so utterly situational that it's very likely that you'll end up never using any of them. Once again, we're going to start out pretty simple and eventually work our way up the unusualness until we arrive at some of these cursed abominations. To start out simple, let's talk about these things that I'm just going to call gravity clocks because I really have no idea what else to call them. Basically, just putting an entity above a piston and a pressure plate creates a sort of clock. What's interesting is that each of these entities take different amounts of time in order to fall and hit the pressure plate again, meaning there's actually some level of modularity reminiscent of the previous clocks, where you can go from 24 ticks to 28 ticks to 27 ticks, but it's still an incredibly stupid way of keeping time. Just about the only use I could think of a her crunch option like this, besides the really niche and weird clock, is the fact that since the minecart takes exactly one more tick to fall than the boat does, you can make a, an incredibly stupid one tick pulse generator. The thing is, is that if we drop both these at the same time, the time it takes for each of these repeaters to turn on is exactly one tick apart from each other. We can actually take this difference and thus unpower this activator rail for exactly one tick, pulling exactly a single item out of this chest. Single tick pulses actually do kind of have a use, and I use them in a couple of my machines, but this is just about the worst way I can think of to possibly generate one. Another thing you can do is actually add a drip leaf on the side here, which essentially allows you to incredibly increase the delay between drops. I think this is about 104 ticks or 108 ticks, I can't quite remember. So this might have a couple use cases, but this really is just about as useless. I also want to briefly mention this little timer here. Basically, since the armor stand is standing on top of this redstone ore, it's causing it to light up. But when the redstone ore eventually turns off, like that one, the armor stand is just going to trigger it again, causing an observer update. What this essentially means is every time this turns off, it creates a pulse. But unfortunately, the thing is redstone ore isn't consistent. It takes an average of 68 seconds to turn off. But the thing is, is that's an average, and it can take basically any amount of time if you're unlucky or lucky enough. So this is kind of a lot more useless, but maybe you could use it for some kind of randomizer. This one's also kind of interesting. This one uses a simple minecart on a sloped rail up against the fence post in contact with the pressure plate. And this actually creates a very convenient one second timer. This one actually has some use cases due to it having a very solid number. The way this works is because pressure plates actually change hitboxes when you activate them, when the minecart is just sitting here, it actually triggers the pressure plate, but the moment that the pressure plate activates, the hitbox actually changes such that it's no longer touching the minecart. And it's going to stay like that for about one second, because pressure plates have a little bit of a cooldown, and it's going to immediately revert states, but then go back to being powered again, because it's touching the minecart. This is actually kind of convenient, but still a very niche way to create a clock. On the subject of more minecart stuff, you can always just stick a minecart in a loop and just have it go in circles. This will be a consistent timer that I guess you can modulate by making the loop a slightly longer. But it's always just going to be a terrible solution, and you definitely just shouldn't do this. A solution that actually does kind of make sense is putting the minecart in water and honey and cobwebs. And this actually does create an incredibly long timer, which does have its use cases. But the thing is that there's just so many better ways to do this that you're really never going to be touching minecart based timers. To move on, as of the previous video, it's been pretty clear that some people want some sort of calibrated skulk sensor content video type sort of thing. But the thing is, is that I haven't really got around to that. So this is what you're going to get. Once again, we're using skulk sensors for their complete unintended purpose, and we're using them as clocks. They're incredibly inconsistent, break frequently, and totally useless. You can set up in a more consistent manner like this, but this is just... I don't know why you would do this. It just looks cool, I guess. There's also a brief moment in which I conceived of the Skulk Shrieker based clock, because standing on top of it as a player causes it to activate in very regular intervals, as it triggers over and over again, but for some reason you actually can't get this to work with literally any other mob, including zombies, or something that would have been more convenient like an armor stand. But it's still certainly an idea. If we want our clocks to scale up to being a lot longer, we need to harness the power of events that happen only very rarely. 
One example is a chicken laying an egg. So the thing is, is we can actually just wait for chickens to lay eggs and have them cross string. And when that string touches the egg, it's going to activate. This should trigger about once every 10 minutes. I don't know if it's a completely regular interval. There's definitely going to be some randomness to the item flying randomly. We have one method, which is significantly more humane than the other method, but both of them work perfectly fine. On the subject of fire, we kind of have a design that definitely inherits some qualities from the blaze-based optical switch, where it essentially just has an armor stand that's perpetually on fire, sitting inside of a cauldron, which has a dripstone with water above it. What this essentially means is that every now and then this cauldron is going to fill with water, but then immediately deplete as it attempts to put out the armor stand that is literally sitting on top of lava, and this will trigger the observer. I'm going to be totally honest, I totally don't understand why this armor stand thing works. You see, the thing about armor stands, if you just put them in lava, they can just sit there forever, and they will never burn away. They'll always be on fire, but they'll never be destroyed. Putting them inside of lava, and then suddenly depriving them of the lava that set them on fire, actually does cause them to burn away. As you can see, this is going to disappear in a couple moments. Also, lighting them on fire does the same exact thing. So as for why lava just being perpetually inside of armor stands keeps them alive, I have no idea. I encourage you to comment down below if you have a theory about why this works, or actually know why this happens, because I'm very curious. Last on the list, we've got arguably the most disgusting contraption in the entire video, and this one was actually given to me by a friend of mine and fellow YouTuber, Green Jab. They've done a pretty bunch of pretty insane stuff with Redstone, including building the massive chessboard that currently sits on the Wavetech server. Highly recommend you go check them out, link is above in the info card and in the description. Anyways, what makes this design so incredibly awful? To start off, this thing just looks cursed given the very real air gap in between both of the components, as well as the fact that it's com entirely inconsistent. Both of these comparators, only one of them is on at a given moment, and it just randomly switches between them with absolutely no pattern. The reality is that neither of us actually understand what the hell is happening here, because the item that is moving around inside of this closed loop should theoretically just be consistently moving in a circle. And this is actually what's happening, but the thing that's confusing is why these comparators are deciding to read the signal at random intervals, never settling into a pattern. What matters is that it's completely random, so maybe I could build a random number generator out of it at some point. But if you want to learn how to make it, it's actually on his channel. Anyways, that'll be it for today's video. If you like my content, make sure to check out the other stuff that I've put together, as well as subscribe to my channel. A couple quick announcements. Number one, I have actually updated to 1.20. Turns out my mods actually were updated. Number two, I've actually fixed the lighting issue at night. As you can see, it's very bright outside, and that was just something that I could change in my shaders, accompanied with the fact that I just updated. That's it for today, and I'll see you next time.